This is about um, the lecture free day that um, universities organized on the 15th of um, 15th of November, although some schools added for different days. But do you feel like this lecture free day has been able to send that message to the federal government? Well, uh, I think it's, it's a decision and is a protest in the right direction. In the sense that um, there's a way you talk to somebody that doesn't hear. Understand, you whistle. If you know that whistle does not go, you demonstrate. If you know that what it does, you protest. You do some few things to attract the attention. And I think it's uh, high time that uh, the world now knows that uh, it is not the university workers own is too much. Is that uh, some people somewhere are not sensitive to the plight of the general populace. And as a result, and it's putting so many things back. And this, is, this cannot be going on. This cannot be going on. And something must be done in earnest. OK. Uh, you know, some people blame um, Chris Nkige for all this that is going on. Do you also share in putting the blame on the table? Or do you feel like this is something that should be addressed holistically and not just addressed to just one particular person? Yes, uh, uh, in my own point of view, I don't think uh, Chris Ngige should just be issued the direct blame because he's a conciliator in this matter. And uh, he, the issue should be addressed holistically in the sense that uh, the problem starts from somewhere. It's not only one person that created those uh, issues. And the issue started, I think we need to not to cut the grass on the head. We should come from the roots. And that's the only way we can achieve a lasting peace so that uh, things will be going normally in the university system and our education to that uh, in the general we, we have a meaning and we have a stay. Thank you. Okay, and um, the things we are talking about it being addressed holistically, I would say apart from the president, we should talk about the person sitting on um, a, a throne that we should all recognize, and that should be the Minister of Education, who said he is not aware that universities held a lecture-free day. How did that make you feel? Because it seems you, well, all, you, all the university union wants the message to be delivered to them. And this person that should be receiving the message is saying that they were not even aware such thing took place. How do you react to that? Well, um, this is very shocking. In the sense that uh, I don't know what the federal governments are aware of. Number one, uh, the presidency is not aware that the strike is on after three months. That now come to the consciousness of the presidency in this country that they now are aware that uh, there is a strike. More so, uh, you are not aware that you are punishing people. So people are being punished. You said you don't want to victimize. We are victimized already. We are being harassed. And things are not going on. And the economy is not even doing well. Understand? How do you want them to, 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 to survive? Most of the teachers, if you look at the, the, the condition in Lagos, most of us are living very far. And the cost of transportation, not to talk about cost of living, not to cost of, cost of accommodation, and everything that put us together to ensure that we deliver a quality service to people are all on the high side. Yes, what are we asking about? We are asking of legitimate rights. And yes, as, uh, let me just tell you that uh, it is not only Hasu that is on this. We have four union based, four university based unions. To the extension in some school they have more than four but the major ones are asu sanu nasu nats in other university they have more than that uh, but also what including konoa well um yes including konoa what i'm saying is that it is not only asu sanu is there nasu is there nat is there the resultant effect of Dishonoring a collective bargain agreement is what we are on. Is our strike, our actions legitimate? Yes. Because it has followed all due process. And once that is done, it is now an act of 
insensitivity, wickedness, and evil attempts to now make people to feel pain. So it's like, it's like you are actually eating our legs, matching our legs, trampling upon our legs with a very high shoe or like a stud. And blood is coming out and you want us to be smiling. It's not just possible. We are not suffering and smiling. We have gone past that. We did all this for about four months to eight months asu to put in our agitation. The whole world knows about this. Okay, let us come back so that there will be peace. So that they will have opportunity to do the needful. Now, you resort to courts, you did this, you do that. Yet, our money, our salaries still remain unpaid. Now, look at you don't want to, you say no work, no pay. That is, the work we have not done, you don't want to pay it. Abby? Now, what about the life, the destiny of the children that are going to take those courses, those activities? Does it mean that we should neglect that eight to four, four to eight months or a year and we should start afresh? Then, that, that is, the university the backlog of university should close and students, even in final year, year four, year five, should start and collect jam and do university uh, uh, entrance examination again. Mind you, we cannot accommodate what we cannot be able to do. And that is just it. So that means the principle of no work, no pay can fly. But now, since the resumption we have been working extra and extra hard. We have doubled all our efforts. In fact, some of us are dropping to the hospital per day just to make sure that we'll be able to meet up the backlog. But as we are doing this, because of the sensitivity we have to the public, because of the cry of the stu children, the students, because of their parents, because of our patriotism to our dear nation, we all suffered, we all work hard to ensure we recover as much as possible. Yes, somebody was saying that to uh, go to hell. This is, this is just unfair. This is just mere of wickedness and not considering the people. This is an autocratic way of doing things. This is high level of insensitivity to Nigerians. And in the extent to put us into permanent slavery in our country. But does it make you feel better when the Minister of Education admitted that he had failed? Well, um, that is just a word of mouth. <laughs> if you have failed, beautiful, you have recognized your failure, fine. But what have you done after that? It's as good as retreat and go back to the drawing table and let right your wrong. Put your wrong right again. And everything will be on. Nobody is asking for what is not avoidable, unavoidable. We are asking for what has been budgeted for. This year, the budget of the year has been budgeted for you are going to pay sal my salaries. Yes, have I not done the work? Yes, you can assess me if I did not do the work, if I not be able to recover. In, the, in our schools, you can see students even coming even the weekends to ensure extended, service, uh, extended um, lectures, to ensure they meet up. I think the best thing to do for Nigeria, for the prosperity's sake, and for this life and the destiny of these great Nigerians, is that you should do the right thing. Pay all the salaries. No work, no pay is a way of victimizing is a way of actually uh putting us about a thousand years back understand nobody does those things nowadays we are more civilized now nigeria is not should be going back we should be going front understand this is pay their salary sit down with our our people ensure that those agreement that you said you can reach reach it meet it up 
Understand? Those ones you say you cannot, let, let the negotiation be going on. Don't be found not doing anything. There is pressure on campus. There is so much pressure on campus that people were saying, why do we even come? Note, in Sanu, with all the promises, with all the feelings we have, our people were, okay, we resumed. The salary for that month was not paid. We were paid the salary about, in, our salary doesn't drop in the end of the month now. It will be 30 something or 34. Now we have in a new calendar in this federal government, we have 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36 <laughs> of the month. After everybody will start, understand? So you can imagine when we were paid about almost 40 something day of the month. For about four, five months, we have not collected salaries. We are going to pay so many fees. We are going to pay transports. At worst, we are going to buy fuel into our cars. For those of us that God, few of us that God blessed to have one uh, small, I better pass my neighbor car. We are able to have that. So if you, the pressure was on us, even in the union, the union leaders, the pressure was on us. Some story will tell you, you have negotiated our salaries, you have negotiated this, we have negotiated this. Today says that even it was what in Nassau that they even gave them amputated salaries. I, I don't know. They now casualize every one of us. It's, 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 it's unfair. I'm telling you, it's actually, it's absolutely unfair. Now, going forward, the um, lecture free day, we don't want to know if the federal government has felt the impact. I know, I, I know that um, Labour Congress too is saying that they will go on strike if the federal government does not listen to what the varsity union is saying. And after all this, if still the federal government is still not paying attention to the demands, so does it mean that another strike is in eminence? Well, um, I think uh, you have actually risen along with us, and this is the reason of the general public. The federal government can never know whether there is a free working day, free lecture. They will never know because they don't feel the pulse of the people. So for somebody that does not feel or insensitive to your plight, how are you expecting that person to know? More so, um, if you can actually assist a camel to the river at a particular time in life you cannot even force the camel to drink from that river it's just unfortunate that um, we the federal government is toiling about at with the life of nigerians i'm talking about the life of nigerians now because it has a contagious effect one, we are talking about the lecturers. You don't know that the lecturers have effect on the students. The students have effect on the family. The family is a little set of a society. So the society is involved. Then uh, the education we have now is a big education. Nobody, no job, no anything. Even those people that are even educated, they, are not, they don't even get a, a, a well-paid job understand you can imagine somebody is being paid a, a graduate being paid thirty thousand naira, even if they can even get that job understand you are talking about killing nigeria so it's a it's a way of uh, i don't know of this uh, the current government uh, policy on education which is zero there's no policy on education it's clear that they don't have any concern about the education but we are saying that uh, 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 our our people our people usually say this added that uh, the sun that is there is still enough to dry the clothes. I feel that uh, the federal government should retreat and uh, find a perfect solution. Number one, the first set is, is very simple. There is a budget for it. Pay the salaries of the, of the workers. Let there be peace. Let, there, let them be happy. Let them be able to do their job effectively. Pay their salaries. Let them be able to feel. Let them be able to feel a little relief from the but harshness of the, the economy. When the president said that uh, for funding education, that they might have to look into other sources, you know, not coming from um, like the 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 pool of the budgets now, but look for additional means to to fund education. 
Do you feel that is justified? Well, it's, it's, it's not justified in the sense that um, in the, at the beginning, you have an allocation for the education already. So it's not as if you just wake up and you don't know what you are doing. It's just a way of telling you that uh, probably there is a problem somewhere. That is, the federal government doesn't even know what they are doing. And that's just it. It's, it, it, it cannot be hard. It cannot be hard. It's, 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 an, it's an hear so to hear that uh, you were saying you want to look for a way of funding education. When education is even a key role. When education in Nigeria is underfunded. So, uh, that is... In fact, the, the, the thing is that the federal government of Nigeria did not actually know the value of education. Education is a multiplier effect in the economy of every country. In fact, we can even at this junction be even selling ourselves. Education is key to who knows. And a lot of things can be done. We have not we 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 intended not to tap the resources that is available. We only look for political Poli uh, maybe we, we, we cannot all be politicians. Somebody must back the politics up. Somebody must have ideas. Somebody must have innovations. Education is innovative. Education is inspiration. There are so many things about education. Those areas of that education need to be tapped. Many of Nigerians brain drains in other countries we are doing very, very well. Nigeria is the one that did this uh, so many things all over the world. Why not do it in Nigeria? Everybody wants the popular saying is that ja japa. Mm. Everybody japa. And when I get to another country, I now become another citizen. Mm. Yes. And that is just it. We have, we have resources, especially human resources, in abundance in this country that can yield Nigeria double the economy uh, GDP, that can give Nigeria a better GDP than what we have now. That education can be can give us resources more than our dependence on fuel if it's well tapped. Education is an economy area that is neglected, and the the number one area of neglect is by punishing those who work in, in the universities. Okay. We thank you so much. That has been very informational. And I do hope that this continuous song that Vasti Gimpions are singing, finally, I hope it would get, well, it seems it has gotten to the ears of the federal government, but let us hope that it gets implemented. We thank you so much for being part of Firecrackers today. Thank you very much. And that's um, Olushola Shogumi, acting chairman of Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities. Thank you so much for being on Firecrackers. Well, on the last one, let me just, on the last one, let okay. me just say this. Uh, please, uh, we want uh, all Nigerians to be, to be together with us as patriotic Nigerians who wants the best for our nation and who doesn't want our nation to go back. We pray that uh, we all work together and ensure that we, we mean it on this uh, federal government to do the needful. Pay all our salaries. We are not hooligans. We are not uh, 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 idle workers. We are, not, uh, we are not lazy. We want to work and we want our work. We don't want our sweat to dry before we start enjoying it. It is good. We have a lot of things to do. Pay a lot of bills. School fees is there rent is there so many things and even the cost of living is very very harsh so we pray that uh, they will pay all our backlogs so that uh, we can actually meet up with the economic challenges we have 